ultimate goal of any business is to generate a sustainable profit. Profitability analysis provides an opportunity for both business owners and managers to evaluate the ability of the business to generate profit in the future. The most common profitability ratios used to assess the profitability of a business are one, the asset turnover ratio, two, return on total assets or ROA, three, return on stockholders equity or ROE, four, earnings per share or EPS, five, the price earnings ratio or PE ratio, and six, dividends per share. The asset turnover ratio can be computed by dividing net sales by the average total assets. The average total assets can be computed by adding total assets for a two-year period and dividing that by two. For example, Greenfield Gates Company has net sales of $905,000 in 2017. Its total assets were $650,000 in 2016 and $780,000 in 2017. The asset turnover ratio would be $905,000 divided by the average of $650,000 and $780,000. The result, 1.27, indicates that the company can generate $1.27 in sales for every dollar of asset it employs. The return on total assets is often referred to as return on assets, or simply ROA. This ratio can be computed by dividing net income by the average total assets. For example, Greenfield Gates Company has net income of $350,000 in 2017. Its total assets were $650,000 in 2016 and $780,000 in 2017. The return on asset ratio would be $350,000 divided by the average of $650,000 and $780,000. The result, 0.49, indicates that the company can generate 49 cents of net income for every dollar of asset it employs. It is important that you see connections among all these ratios. For example, the denominator in the return on asset ratio and the asset turnover ratio is the same, average total assets. However, the numerator in the asset turnover ratio is net sales, while the numerator in the return on asset ratio is net income. Net income is a subset of net sales. Therefore, ROA will always be lower than the asset turnover ratio. How much lower depends on how efficiently the company is operating. Ideally, a company would want these two ratios to be as close as possible, which would indicate that the company doesn't spend much on cost of goods sold and other expenses. Return on stockholders' equity, or simply return on equity, is also referred to as ROE. This ratio measures the amount of income a company can generate using the funds stockholders have invested. For example, Greenfield Gates Company has net income of $350,000 in 2017. Its total stockholders' equity was $400,000 in 2017 and $450,000 in 2016. The return on equity ratio would be 0.82. This 0.82 figure indicates that the company can generate 82 cents of net income for every dollar it receives from an equity investor. Again, it is important that you see connections among all these ratios. For example, the numerator in the return on assets ratio is the same as the numerator in the return on equity ratio. However, the denominator in return on equity is equity, which is a subset of assets, the denominator used for return on assets. Therefore, return on equity will be higher than return on assets. How much higher depends on how much debt the company has. Only if a company has no debt whatsoever, then return on equity and return on assets will be the same. Earnings per share, or EPS, is the amount of net income that is allocated to each outstanding share of common stock. EPS can be computed by subtracting preferred dividends from net income and dividing that figure by the average number of outstanding common shares. The average outstanding common shares is the beginning balance of the common shares outstanding plus the ending balance of common shares outstanding divided by two. 
Suppose that Greenfield Gates Company has $350,000 in net income for 2017, and average outstanding shares of common stock totaling $27,500. In 2017, the company paid $25,000 in dividends to preferred shareholders. The earnings per share would be $11.82, which is the portion of net income hypothetically allocated to each share of common stock. Earnings per share leads to the price earnings ratio, also known as PE ratio. The PE ratio measures the market price of a common stock on a given date compared to the earnings per share. A higher P.E. ratio is indicative of market confidence in that particular stock. The P.E. ratio is computed by dividing the market price per share, assume $37.45, by the earnings per share. A 3.17 P.E. ratio indicates that the market is willing to pay more than three times the amount of earnings per share for that share of stock. The higher the P.E. ratio, the more confident the market feels about the future performance of that stock. Dividends per share is similar to earnings per share. In earnings per share, the investor measures how much net income was available to each share of common stock. In dividends per share, the investor looks at how much dividends is available to each share. To calculate dividends per share, divide the total dividends paid in a year by the number of shares outstanding. Suppose that Green Gates Company paid $50,000 in dividends to common stockholders and that there were 60,000 shares of common stock outstanding. The dividends per share would be 83 cents, which means that investors are receiving 83 cents in dividends for each share of common stock they own.